Hi, it's Ispo Storyteller. Today we'll cover one more prominent player from the early days of StarCraft 2. I've already made videos on a bunch of American players, but today we'll jump to the heart of Europe. We'll talk about the greatest Austrian player. He was a promising competitor who could have become the top one in his region, but a series of traumas and accidents put an end to his rising career. His name is Philip Simon, better known as Monchi. There is not much information on how Monchi started his journey to the Grandmaster League. He was also a bit late to the party, as his first results appeared only in 2011, but still, Philip was successfully taking part in some minor and weekly tournaments, slowly but surely building up his reputation and winning some prize money. It seems like the start of a good career. Monchi was also able to beat the best players of that time, including such names as Demaga and Zoke. His playstyle was also very entertaining to follow. Monchi could combine both heavy macro-oriented openers as well as some two base all-ins against his opponents. It was indeed fun to watch, and he was good enough to combine different playstyles. But unlike many players from that period, he was not afraid to go for a straight-up late-game macro. But the player also seemed to be versatile, he wouldn't just mind throwing a cheeky cannon rush or another dirty proto strategy. The one problem that Zerg in general... Oh, look at Munchie! He's actually going for the wall off and the cannons! And that Overlord will take quite a while uh, before it reaches those cannons. This is looking pretty good for Monchi. Lelouch can't react in time and even though the Overlord finally spots the first pylon, it is way too late. The probe will place down the cannons and there is nothing right now buildings there is just way too much look at it there are four cannons already and he can't hope to defeat it with only five roaches and a bunch of zerglings he will have way too many losses and yet it was very common for all protoss players to do something aggressive and the best way to play was doing some two base all-ins and timing attacks against zergs and even sometimes terrans his favorite strategy was perhaps an immortal push im Army Supply, jetzt nach unten. Guardian Shield ist drin. Guardian Shield ist drin. Und jetzt die Mordels mit erhöhten Range. Geben sie den Roaches ins Gesicht. Also richtig ins Gesicht. Aber er geht immer noch. Er bleibt hier noch locker. Er bleibt hier locker. Killt jetzt allerdings schon mal den nächsten Spine Caller. Geht es nach und dann wieder rein. Alter, wie diese Remordels gerade reinrocken. Apart from StarCraft 2, Philip was also a big fan of motorcycle racing. And unfortunately, on the 1st of October 2011, Monchi injured his elbow in a crash at his motocross club's race. An up-and-coming player's health was a danger, as well as his career in StarCraft 2. And it was uncertain whether Monchi could continue playing professionally, and it seemed like Austria just lost its best talent. This accident also planted a time bomb that would later bring a lot of bad news to the German-speaking community. But Philip made a lot of effort to recover and continue doing his best for himself and his home country. It took him only two months to return back to StarCraft 2, and surprisingly the results were only getting better. In half a year Mochi managed to become a consistent player in ESL German leagues, as well as winning a lot of smaller online caps. He didn't however succeed in qualifying for WC 2012, failing to outplay the best Romanian Protoss Night End. Anyways, in October, Monchi qualified for ISF 2012. This was an event that introduced national qualifiers, and of course, Monchi easily got through as the best Austrian player. Soon he secured the first place in his group, defeating Scream and Sort of. The next opponent was in the playoffs, Dream Bunny, a relatively unknown player at that time, who would later become the best Danish Terran. Monchi defeated him with a 2-1 score and then he was matched with the scariest opponent the tournament had. It was Quirtle, the Korean WCS 2012 runner-up. This guy was a top-tier Protoss player and the overall favorite to win the whole tournament. We unfortunately don't have any saved records of those games, but the Austrian Prodigy somehow managed to outplay the Korean Beast with a 2-1 score. It was the most serious challenge and later Monchi easily defeated Master Rock and took a revenge on Night End, thus winning the whole tournament. It was a great success, followed by a solid Dreamhack Bucharest performance, where Monchi made it to top 8 and all of a sudden lost to Starnan, a Swedish underdog who managed to make an upset happen. Look at the amount of Colossus here for Starnan, the spread is excellent, the upgrades are excellent, and Starnan says get the F out, this is my third base, get out of here, get back home, and Starnan is looking like he wants to go to the semi-final, all the Colossus fall down, 70 supply to 140, and all of a sudden Monchi is on the back foot, and very simply here, Jorosar, units are made. 
Nerds are killed. In November, there was another Premier Level tournament called Dreamhack Winter. Monchi should not have been participating in this tournament as he didn't have many ranking points to qualify for this Dreamhack finals, but two Korean players cancelled their participation and Monchi went there as a stand-in. It was probably the most stacked tournament of this year. It featured the best foreign players such as Naniwa, Torza, Stefana, Nurture and some others, but there were also Korean champions such as Hero, Teja and 4GG. No one really had high hopes for Monchi. Even though he was making some progress, he was actually lagging far behind the aforementioned names. Monchi got a group with four Zerg players, the best Imbo race at that moment, and the Austrian player starts his run with a sudden 2-0 against Nurture. What an upset already, but perhaps he was just lucky? Hell no, Monchi goes on to defeat all other participants with a 2-0 score, losing only to TLO at the end of the day. Philip, all of a sudden, turned out to be in first place in his group, advancing higher than any other tournament favorites. His next opponent was Naniwa, the Swedish king in the north, a guy who had probably the best unit control in the whole Europe. The series goes wild and players finally get the even score, one last map remaining. Protoss vs Protoss was actually an unpredictable matchup, it was hard to scout and sometimes the luckier player could get an upper hand with a better blind build order win. So for the last game Monchi decided to play it as safe as possible. He couldn't out micro Naniwa with direct stalker engagements, but perhaps he can outplay him with some smart defense and a better economy. But Naniwa isn't really into these shady expand builds, he feels blood and he goes straight for the kill. A blink stalker all in is incoming, but it seems like Monchi has just enough sentries to buy time for his first immortal. It should be fine. Naniwa will attack the next eye and the Austrian player should have some extra seconds to wait. But Naniwa just jumps on top of Monchi's army and that's a disaster. Say, oh, Naniwa is going to get really crazy and he's going to go right up on top of the ramp. This is it. All or nothing. Kills one immortal immediately. But nice warpins yeah. from Munchi. is going to trap these stalkers. Naniwa has to evacuate and all of a sudden Nani is in a little bit of trouble here, Kev. As you said, man, super good forces by Munchi allowing the Zealots to deal so much damage. If there was one immortal, this would have worked. Two immortals, it was not going to work. I'm surprised that Naniwa did that. Man, the uh, Zealot warp in was just awesome. Due to the great force fields and Zealot warp in, Monchi managed to outplay his superior opponent, and now Naniwa has nothing to do but expand. It's not the worst situation, but it's a tough place to be in the game. And Naniwa though can still be greedy and go for a Colossi production, and that will give him an upper hand later. And he can also buy time himself with Blink Stalkers, which is exactly what he tries to do. But Monty, wait, what are you doing? Instead of building workers, he completely stops his economy development and goes for a huge all-in attack. It's crazy risky, but he's gonna try it anyways. And Naniwa seems to be a bit surprised by this. Yes, he does. He's gonna keep these immortals kind of sectioned off, and this is a good initial fight for Naniwa. He's gonna kill a few units. He's not really gonna lose much of anything. He's still falling back. He's buying time. He's now three immortals to four, but it's 15 stalkers for Munchi against the five of Naniwa. And that is the biggest problem right now, Ben. And Naniwa's gonna have to pull probes, Kevin. I really don't see any other way. His big fight starting to unfold. Naniwa just lost an immortal. He's trying to hammer away at one of Munchi's. It will go down. Naniwa falling back, dangerous defensive game, he's playing, that Immortal stuck, and Munchi is gonna pick it off, Naniwa's in a lot of trouble right now, Munchi pushing into the natural, here comes the probes, off the line, oh, it's looking so bad, 90 supply for Munchi against the 55 of Naniwa, great force fields though. Munchi hitting a really sick timing right now with all these blink stalkers, Naniwa of course trying to do whatever he can, one more forward blink, Naniwa G's out, and Munchi takes the series and advances to the semi-final of Dream Egg Winter 2012. Because you've had a really successful year. Is this just one more thing that you can wrap up this year and make it a really great 2012? Well, it has been success so far. And yeah, of course, like, DreamHack has always been a big dream. And performing well in this tournament especially is, yeah, a really good experience for me. No pressure, but you're the last non-Korean left. Yeah, so I have to make it to the finals, at least. Fighting talk! The next opponent is Korean Protoss Hero, but this time Monchi fails to impress the public, as he did many times already. Hero is just a different kind of beast with far superior micro and tactics, perfect map control, aggressive blinks, and Monchi falls behind in the last game, taking an awful engagement at the opponent's ramp. Hero wants to sandwich, he wants to come in uh, with those blink stalkers and pick up the Colossus again. 
as the main armies of course falls in the natural. Oh, what a sandwich! Zealots crushing from the front! Stalkers fighting from the back and the Immortals doing great work! I don't think Monty's gonna be able to break this, Kev. Uh, really great forces by Hero. There's no more Colossus, so Munchie won't be able to break these forces anymore. Plenty of sentries left oh. for Hero. More force fields going down. Just a phenomenal game by Hero. Munchie's gonna try to force his way up the ramp, but it's not gonna work. So in the end, we have Munchie in the top four. Alongside Nurture, Philip Simon became the best non-Korean player for the short period of time. Only a couple of weeks later, Monchi would also establish himself as the best German-speaking player, winning ESL Pro Series Winter Season 2012. It seems like a new star was born. Many viewers expected Monchi to perform even better in the next year. However, it was also the time for Half of the Swarm, the new expansion for StarCraft 2. It changed the game quite a lot, bringing new units and completely revamping the balance. And just as many great players of the past, Monty found it difficult to adjust to the new metas. But maybe he just needed some extra time, because some players like Naniva for example were also having issues adapting to the new game, but later found a lot of success in that expansion. But apart from a new challenge from the game itself, the motorcycle accident was another burden that kept slowing him down. In summer 2013, Monchi was scheduled to do immediate and serious surgeries because of the massive infection on his arm. He had to be operated several times before he would be able to start playing StarCraft II competitively again. Unfortunately, Monchi couldn't achieve a full recovery after that ill-fated motorcycle accident. His last major event was Dreamhack Bucharest, where he couldn't make it out of his group. It wasn't really his fault. While he was undergoing many surgeries, other players were practicing for weeks straight to prepare for the most important StarCraft II event. The game was on the rise, and the competition got a lot harder than it used to be only a year before, and as suspected, Monty once again detected some issues with his hands that made it really difficult for him to compete on a really high level. After some thoughts, Philip Simon chose to retire for good and study chemistry as well as enjoy his life to the fullest potential. Up to this day, Monchi remains the highest earning player from Austria, who brought us a lot of great games throughout his career. And who knows, maybe if it wasn't for his medical conditions, we could have seen a lot more from him. That said, I hope he will still be remembered as a part of our StarCraft 2 history. And that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to subscribe for more. Click here for more videos on other great StarCraft 2 talents. Have a good day, good luck, and have fun.